Sioux Lake on Mount Rainier. Just above the road, there's a little bit of road noise here. Um, pretty interesting clash of seasons going on. We got a little bit of snow on some beautiful fall color. So I hiked up just above a parking area on the Natchez Loop Trail and found this beautiful view. There's a wide spot in the trail here where I can set up and do a quick oil painting. Here's the scene I want to paint. I'm going to zoom in a bit, do a landscape orientation on that ridge line and those trees climbing the hill there. This view is also beautiful, but it's a little tougher composition. Um, those snow covered trees up there on the top of the mountain are just gorgeous, especially with the red. I think those are huckleberry bushes that are red from the fall color. That's really gorgeous. I'm tempted to zoom in and paint something like that, but I can't quite figure out a good composition here. Whereas this view, the colors are a little more intense. There's more of a shadow pattern. I'm just liking the composition a bit better. I'm going to play with it on my iPhone a bit and get started. I'm working on a Gorilla Painter oil primed linen panel 11 by 14. I've got my one third lines mapped in just to help me rough in the composition real quick. I'll take a few pictures on my iPhone just to get some rough ideas and then I'll play with that as I'm sketching it in. I'll start by using a small brush with a little bit of burnt sienna. There's a lot of really warm colors in the scene, so I think I'll sketch with warm, but kind of dull burnt sienna. Play with the composition a bit as I'm sketching. Then I'll move into the turpentine wash. Quick rundown on my palette. I've got Artist Turpentine out. After I do the turpentine wash, I'll put this away and get out the odorless mineral spirits. I use Gamsol. I've got a little bit of liquid in here. I'll add that to my mixtures because I like the way it increases the flow of the paint. I can adjust the viscosity so that it's just right, kind of like warm butter, like room temperature butter. Not too sticky, not runny at all. Ivory Black, Cold Gray from Rembrandt, Titanium White, Cerulean Blue, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, Transparent Oxide Brown, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Cad Red, Cad Yellow, Windsor Lemon, Yellow Ochre. wash. I'll wash in a clean blue for the sky. Probably cobalt blue because cobalt, it's a little warmer than cerulean, but it's weak so it, it stays very light. It's easy to move around. I may go ahead and just use that same cobalt blue to map in some of the shadow patterns where the trees are casting a beautiful blue shadow reflecting the sky off that snow. Then for the distant ridge line, I'll map that in with some alizarin crimson. And for the trees, maybe a mix of burnt umber. For the trees, a mix of transparent oxide brown and cad yellow. And I'll introduce more cad yellow as I move forward. And then for the fall colored shrubs. 
mostly cad yellow. I may dip into a little bit of cad red as well, where the bushes are very red, just to help me kind of map in, place some of the pieces of interest. This point here will be on the bottom right intersection of one third lines to place it kind of at a center of interest. I like the deep shadow, I like the blue shadows on the snow, I like how the snow is also catching some highlight. I'm going to play with maybe introducing a trail leading up to this point, circling around here and then on up the hill to give the eye a, a path to follow. Alright, there's the turpentine wash in. Just roughed in some shadow patterns, roughed in this little trail, and then some warm hues where the fall colors are peeking through. I've cleaned off my palette. I'll mix up some clean sky color now. The sky is pretty bright cobalt toward the top and then cobalt with just a touch of lizard and crimson and a little bit lighter toward the tree line. I'll also mix up the trees on the ridge covered in snow. That is a pretty bright white. I think I'll just take titanium white and add a touch of cad yellow to warm it and then the green of those trees under the snow is a really cool gray so I'll take a little bit of the sky color and darken it just a touch with some cold gray so it's a little darker than the the sky then I'll continue to mix the shadow color of the rocks up there and the sunny, the light of the rocks up there. The light of the rocks is a really warm gray. I'm not going to go as warm as it appears because I want them to have some distance. So I'll go just a little grayer, a little cooler than what I'm actually seeing. And as I work forward I'll brighten and bring in the more chroma to bring those forward. I had to move down the hill just a little bit along the path to stay in the sun. It is really cold in the shade. I've got a bunch of colors mixed up here. I've got the blue of the sky, a little warmer, a little lighter toward the tree line. I've got the light on the trees and the shadow of the trees, the light on the rocks, and the shadow on the rocks high up the mountain. Then as it comes down further, I've got the light on the tree and the shadow on the tree. Then I've got some of the rocks where the sun's hitting it, some light, more yellow shades as they come closer. And some of the scrubby brush up there with some fall color, really grayed down, but a yellow, a little darker yellow and then a little red. Then I've got some of the richer trees as, as they come closer. There's some warmth in the shadow. The deep shadow is kind of warm. The bulk of the tree is kind of dark and rich green. Then there's some light on the majority of the big trees and some light on the smaller trees. The smaller trees seem to be a little higher in value. I can also use these to kind of creep up the hill a little bit too to add some harmony, to add some color. Then as I move forward into the foreground, as the colors become richer, I'm just going to dip into straight pure color. I'll just dip into straight cad yellow, cad red, a little bit of this Windsor lemon into the gray colors I mixed here. 
um, just move the, the chroma richer as it comes forward. I've got to move again. I'm in the shade again and I am freezing. It is cold up here. Adventure of Painting. It's a series of short tutorial videos you can watch at your own pace, full of great information. One of the lessons he talks about the integrity of the line, which my immediate takeaway from that is make the lines interesting. Um, try to avoid parallel lines, try to avoid repeating patterns that could make the composition boring. So what I'm trying to do here is make interesting angles and shapes in an abstract way in the shadows I'm seeing on the mountain. I'm not copying what I'm seeing exactly, but I'm kind of following the initial wash and trying to create patterns that I find interesting. So more graphic, more abstract, not really exactly what I'm seeing up on the mountain. I'm dipping into the sky color to bring up the value a little bit and increase the blue a little bit. I may go back in a little bit later and add some warmer shadows as well. We'll see how I get along. I'm not sure why, but at some point my gimbal died and so the camera turned up and filmed about 15 minutes of sky and you missed me painting some of the trees. Basically I started by painting the tree shadows, mapping in the darks. I'm going for an interesting abstract pattern with the trees as well. I'm trying not to copy exactly what I see in front of me, trying to simplify things. I don't want a lot of repeating shapes or sizes. I want to reinforce the illusion of atmospheric perspective and linear perspective by making the farther trees 
and the farther clumps of trees smaller and lighter and bluer than the foreground trees. So here I'm playing with the linear perspective, trying to make similar marks near and then far and the farther ones are smaller. I'm trying to come up with a random pattern. After mapping in the shadows I block in the lights and again I'm trying to not paint individual trees but paint blocks of color. I blend here and there especially in the distance to soften edges and push it back. In the foreground I leave some of the edges. I'm also keeping in mind and in some places exaggerating the sunny side of the trees. I want it to be obvious that the sun is coming from the right. There's a sunny side and a shadow side of the trees. All right, it's freezing. I'm in the shadow again. I'm sorry I keep complaining about it. I just wasn't expecting it to be quite this cold up here, so I need to wrap it up. I'm just going to take some color notes for the fall colors on the hills. Just dab those in for now and I can finish it in the studio later. The light's changing quite a bit too as the sun is moving across the horizon. Here's where it ended up. Nice time up here. It's so cold here in the shade. Um, I should have brought a heavier coat and some hand warmers. It's only early October, so I didn't think it'd be this cold up here. But you know, there's snow on the ground in the shade, and when the wind picks up, it is really frigid. But still, I'm really glad I came. Captured some beautiful footage some beautiful photos and hopefully took some color notes and compositional ideas that I can use later. I'll take a look at it in the studio and put it out on my website. As always, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can
can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.